Hey everyone, welcome you all to the YouTube channel of DCC NIT. Myself Mayur Reis from third year CSA NIT Agarthal and today I am going to discuss the problem Moscow Gorillas that came in court forces around 852 division 2. So the problem basically states that we will be given two permutations of length n and we have to count the number of pair of integers l to l comma r such that the max for the sub arrays starting from l to r in both the permutations is thin. That is like uh, we will be finding the number of sub arrays in both the permutations in for whom the max value is same for both the permutations. For example, here if you take this example and uh, in, the, the, in the second example, if we take this sub arrays, like uh, for the first permutation, the max value of 154 is 2. And again for the second permutation, the max value is again 2. So the max value is same in both the cases. And so this is a valid sub array or like this is a valid pair of integers L comma. So we have to count the number of such pairs L and R. Now, if you don't know what is uh, the max value, so uh, it is given here, like max is the minimum positive integer missing from the sequence. For example, here uh, for 3, 1, 2, 6, the first missing value is 4. Because 1 is present, 2 is present, 3 is present, 4 is not present. So the max value is 4. For this, it is 1. For 5, it is 1. So uh, let's solve it by taking a bigger example. Here I have taken two permutations. The first one is 6145273. The next one is 3651724. Now, uh, the brute force approach is like uh, we'll be considering all the possible L comma R. That is, uh, first of all, we'll start from uh, here, then we'll go till here, then here, then here, and so on, like this. Then again, we'll start from 1, 4, then 1, 4, 5, 2, like this. Like, we'll check for everything, like for all the possible sub arrays or like pairs. And it will uh, be, of course, like uh, an n squared approach, which will give TN. Now, you have to think of a better way. Uh, like, uh, if you think carefully, then uh, you will see that, like, uh, first of all, we need to find the pairs or like the sub arrays for whom the max value is 1. Then we'll find the sub arrays or like the pairs for whom the max value is 2, and so on. So, finding the sub arrays for whom the max value is 1 is pretty simple. If I see in this, in the first array, if I select L to R in this range, if I select L to R in this range, like uh, in the marked rectangle, then whatever L and R we select, the max value is always equal to 1. Similarly, if I take my uh, L and R in the left half also, like uh, this of course is one element only, so the, my max value is, is always 1. For example, uh, here it is 6, so it is 1. And here, if I take 5 to 7, the my max value is 1. Similarly, for the lower case, uh, for the lower permutation, here, if I uh, take L to R in this range and in this range, so my max value will be 1. Means, uh, if I my L and R lies here or here, the max value will be 1. So, uh, we'll continue with this idea. Now, the thing is like, uh, the positions of L to R should be same in both the permutations. So uh, from here we can see that like what is the pos common uh, positions between them. So the common places between them are like uh, I can select my L to R either from this part or from this part. Is it correct? Like if I select my L is this one and my R is this one, then uh, for this part my max value is one. For this part, my max value is second one. So this is one valid case. And uh, similarly, I can take like uh, this part also and this part also. And the other uh, possible case can be like if I take the whole. So these are the various possible uh, scenarios in the right half. And similarly, in the left half, uh, we have only one possible case. That is like if I select the sub of length one, which will have six in the first permutation, three in the second permutation. Now there's another uh, thing uh, like which have to change like here uh, in between them there is also another group. So in total like um, here there is one here there is one. So first of all we will check like uh, the left numbers like how many places are there in the to the leftmost one. Then we will check how many places are there to the rightmost one. And then we will check how many places are there in between the two ones. So uh, all this will give me the result for max equal to 1. Like, uh, if I uh, now uh, find, means, uh, suppose there are 
x integers so here i can say that like um, my result will be plus equal to x into x plus 1 by 2 similarly if there are y integers here so again i will add y y plus 1 by 2 and so on like uh, if it is z in middle so i will add like z into z plus 1 by 2 so like uh, for max equal to 1 i will add all of this i guess this is pretty easy till now like we just have to find the positions of one and then count like how many numbers are there to the left uh, to the left of leftmost one how many numbers are there or how many positions are there to the right of rightmost one and how many numbers are there or positions are there in between the two ones so uh, counting them and then uh, just doing this calculation will give me the result for max equal to one now why x into x plus one this is because like uh, this is simple we have to just uh, use the form of nc2 that is like uh, nc2 is basically n into n plus one by two so here this is the same thing like selecting any two indices among given pair of indices given pair of n indices so uh, this is this basically sums up it now uh, this is for max equal to one now what shall we do for them like for max equal to two max equal to three and so on because uh, we have to check for all the equal maxes. So let me just erase all of these things. Okay. So uh, till now for one is done. Now for two, like for max equal to two, what shall we do? Like uh, for max equal to two, my sub array should have the should have the value one. Is it correct? Like whatever subarray i take let's say if i take this subarray this will have uh, my max s2 if i take this subarray this will have my max s2 if i take this subarray this will have my max s2 and if i take this subarray this will also have my max s2 now if i increase it further like if i go beyond this now this won't have max equal to 2 because 2 is present here so this will have max equal to 3 so i can't go any means any further so I am just limited to this position now for the second one for the uh, second permutation we can check like uh, this is possible then this is possible then this is possible this is possible this is possible again on the left side this is possible this is possible this is possible and so on. like we can get many combinations but all of them should have one for sure so uh, from this again we have to find the common places the common positions now how can i find the common positions that is my question so uh first of all we have to make sure that like uh, one should be present in both the permutations because uh if suppose uh let's just let me just erase it let's say if i just select these positions for the first permutation Yes, the max value is 2, but for the second permutation, the max value is not 2. I have to uh, add this one also. So, my first condition is like I have to make sure that both the ones, both the ones are present in my subarray. So, my minimum length subarray will be this part. Like, I have to make sure that at least this part is present in my subarray for max equal to 2. Now, I can, if possible, I will extend further. So, on the right side can i extend further no because here this is two so i can't extend anymore on the right side yes it is possible i can add this one and this one so yeah there are so total two sub arrays one of length three another of length four so again uh, for max equal to two we are getting two sub arrays or two pairs of integers l comma r so um now to generalize it or like okay uh, let me just give another example of three then we'll generalize it let's see what happens for three now for three we have to make sure that one and two both are present so for making one and two present uh we have to keep this part at least in the first permutation we have to keep this part at least in the second permutation now since we have to make sure that both the permutations have same positions present so at least you have to keep till this and till this in both of them now can i go any further on the right side no it is possible it is not possible uh, and on the left side it is again not possible because three is present so this is the only possible scenario now um, let me just write another example so that um, it is better to explain let's say one two 
see there's um let's see here one two six seven five three four then one two again three here five four six seven so in this case um uh, if i am looking for max equal to three first of all i have to keep one and two for sure so yeah both of them are matching now what is the next case like um i can keep this position right i can keep this position also i can keep this position also but can't go any further on the laptop i can keep this position so i have the choices this one is fixed like the one and two should be present for sure but we have further options i can keep this position also or this up to this only on the left side or in the right side i can stop here only or i can stop here or i can stop here or i can stop here so basically on the left side i have two possibilities like uh, i can uh, start my sub array from any of these two positions that is this and this and on the right side i can start my sub array from this or this or this or this so there are four possibilities so in total there are four into two that is eight possible pairs of Ellender. so this is the general thing like first of all we'll find the common region between them what is the common region then we'll find like till how much we can go there is uh we are still you can uh obviously in the upper example that we are stopping whenever we are getting three whenever we are getting three on any side we are stopping there so we have options till before that so either to the right of three here or to the left of three here so here like you can see um on the left side there is no restriction because uh there is no three here on the left side so we are going till the last so here we are getting and on the right side since there is three here so we are going till this part so we are getting four options so uh in this way we can just have a general uh formula for this like uh we'll count how many positions are there on the left side how many positions are there on the right side and we'll just multiply them so this is the general thing like uh this is the basic intuition for this and we'll just keep on checking for all the max values like for max equal to three four five and so on till n and then for max equal to n plus one this if since um here you can see that uh this is a max so this the value of n for this is seven so we can go to max equal to eight when we include the whole permutation then the max value will be eight and so this that is also another valid error of l and r here l will start from here and r will end at here so again we will increment my result will increment our result at the end because we are adding for max equal to eight so this is the whole thing let's look at take a look at the solution okay so here you can see that uh first i have taken the input and we are basically storing the position so here i am storing like where uh like where x is located here x are basically the numbers in the permutation for example when when i am inputting five for the permutation i am just storing like where five is located for the first permutation it is located at the stored in key and for the second permutation it's stored in queue and then uh basically what we are doing is like uh first of all we are checking for max equal to one as i've said like uh firstly uh we are just finding the mini uh leftmost one so here i've taken mean of p1 q1 here you can see mean of p1 q1 and then uh how many numbers are on the left side on the left of leftmost one so this is basically equal to left because we are following zero based indexing here for example the leftmost uh, one is located at index three so there are basically three positions before it Z the position zero one and two so l count equal to three or equal to left so i have added rest plus equal to l count into l count plus one by two similarly for right i have taken the max of p1 comma q1 so I'm getting the mix, uh, rightmost position, the position of rightmost one, and then the R count, that is the number of positions on the right side of that, will be n minus one minus right. Again, because of zero based indexing, and then similarly that is added to result. Sim and then we are finding like how many numbers are there in between the two ones. So that is basically right minus left minus one. 
the mid count is right minus left minus one and again that is added to result now we are finding for max equal to 2 to n for max equal to 2 to n uh we'll be like running a loop for all of the maxes like for max equal to 2 max equal to 3 max equal to 4 and so on let's say i am just currently searching for max equal to 3 now for max equal to 3 what i will do is like okay first of all i am just initializing l and r to l equal to n and r to minus 1 so these are basically the positions so uh, as i've shown here like so like uh here you can see that uh, this position in the middle marked in blue so i have to keep this part at least for max equal to 3 this part is mandatory so my left will be pointing here and my right will be pointing here now left is initial to n and r is initial to minus 1 because like uh, those are outside our uh, required spaces so uh, index n doesn't exist index minus 1 doesn't exist so like that's why those are initial to those values so here, uh, whenever we are checking for max equal to three, we'll be uh, like uh, we'll be minimizing L with the position of two in permutation P, the position of two in permutation Q. That's what I've done here, and then uh, similarly for um, R, I've just maximized the position. So you can see that. Now I will check like whether my current max that is three, this lies in between them. If this lies in between this L and R, so of course uh, like uh, three also lies between that segment. So my max will can't be three because three is present there. So I'll just continue from there. Here I check that thing only. Now uh, if it's not, then yes we are at a valid case and we'll now check like how many numbers are there or how many positions are there how many feasible positions are there on the left how many feasible positions are there on the right so for that uh, first of all i just initially start to 0 and to n minus 1 so these are basically like uh, the starting end to which we can go the rightmost end to which we can go now uh, if my position of max is less than l let's say here uh, you can see my position of 3 here it is on the left side of this on the left side of this so i have to stop it here i have to stop it here so i am just maximizing my number with this similarly here if it is on the right side then i have to stop it here so basically that is done here you can just uh, like do it on your own also like i am just i have just done it with my own implementation that way like i am just finding the start and and the uh, means start position and the end position and then we are finding like how many feasible positions are there with l count and r count and at last we have just multiplied them and added to the result and for max equal to n plus one that is if n equal to seven then for max equal to eight i have just incremented raised by one result by one and finally printed this so that is basically the solution if there is any kind of doubt you can ask in the comment section i'll try my best to solve that that's all for now thank you